You guys crushed it on our light goal for the recent video covering the Generation 6 trio and how good those could have been in Scarlet and Violet. So today, we're going to be covering the Tapus. We'll see how good they could have been in Scarlet and Violet's VGC format, since these all could have been huge threats in Regulation G in my opinion. If you guys want more of these types of discussion videos, let me know down below what mods you want me to discuss, as I would love to hear your guys' thoughts. Regardless, I'll do another one of these videos if we can keep up the 75 likes on this one. With that out of the way though, let's start off with how good Tapu Bulu could have been. Now Tapu Bulu is pretty cut and dry. Nobody besides YouTubers would have honestly used this Pokemon, and if you say that you would have, you're lying or you're a top of Bulu simp. Unless you absolutely needed a rock type move and nature's madness, Bulu is objectively just inferior to Rillaboom in every way. And I know it's not for the reason that a lot of you guys are going to say, which is, oh, Bulu needs Grassy Glide, because instead the bigger issue is that it doesn't have Fake Out and U-Turn, which is basically a death sentence. I genuinely think this Pokemon is pretty irredeemable unless if you specifically have some attachment to Bulu, and I say this as someone who is a Bulu girly. You really do need to try and like shoehorn it onto a team or you're just not going to make it work unless you really need Rillaboom with Rock Slide. Moving into our actually viable Tapus, let's discuss the next weakest option being Tapu Lele. Now, Tapu Lele is definitely an inferior terrain setter when it comes to comparing it to Ndidi, but unlike Tapu Bulu, I actually think there's a few reasons to use this over the premier psychic terrain setter right now. Despite lacking expanding force, which is a pretty key option for offensive psychic types and psychic terrain spam teams, this still has a lot of benefits and and where Ndidi would maybe utilize moves such as Helping Hand, Trick Room, and Follow Me to benefit a team, Tapu Lele could instead be a really strong single target wall breaker. Considering the fact that a lot of its best partners would be teams featuring options like Tornadus Incarnate and Calyrex Shadow Rider, Ndidi could definitely struggle here as opposed to Tapu Lele, where its fourth move is typically Dazzling Gleam, whereas Lele could feature moves such as Psychic and Psyshock that would otherwise be able to pressure some of the most common wide guard users being Mian and Iron Valiant in the format. Once these wide guard users are taken care of, Tapu Lele can still pretty freely fit on a move such as Dazzling Gleam in order to not only still pressure Dark types pretty well, but get a really strong spread special attack that would be really beneficial next to Calyrex Shadow, which fears Dark types significantly. If you want to go one step further, you could even add a Chiyu onto this team, which would not only be great at pressuring the Steel types that would otherwise threaten Lele's Fairy Stab, but it would also be a great partner to just enable damage further on Tapu Lele, as with the Choice Scarf, it's not exactly going to be hitting the hardest. Also, Tapu Lele actually benefits Chiyu pretty well too, now that I think about it, because Chiyu would be a lot less forced to go for Terra Ghost on these choice specs and scarf sets, as with Psychic Terrain up, Incineroar wouldn't have as much luxury to go for a fake out in view. Now there's definitely a lot of benefits to using Tapu Lele in a format like this, but I won't act like it's going to be all positives. For starters, Tapu Lele has a base 95 speed, which on paper might not seem too bad, but it's actually a pretty horrible speed tier for a terrain setter right now. Not only is it slower than key wall breakers such as Landorus Incarnate, or Shifu Single and Rapid, and Chiyu, they could all very easily pressure you with just a single attack or two, but it also can't viably keep up terrain against threats like Rillaboom and now potentially even Tapu Fini. Tapu Lele could potentially partner with Ndidi though as a guaranteed way to keep up psychic terrain pressure with two different Zetters, but this also comes with its own slew of issues, as typically these teams also partner with a Calyrex form, meaning you would be running three psychic types. Now this comes with its own string of problems, as if I really wanted to go with the third psychic type route, I would typically be looking at other options such as Iron Crown, which depending on the team I needed could either hit faster or harder than Lele ever could, thanks to the booster energy. I also would have Armor Rouge, which could potentially use Wide Guard as a really good supportive move that is really top tier right now. Or even if I wanted to get a Trickery Mode on this team, I could throw on a Hatterene, which is far slower than any other Psychic Terrain threat, giving it a very key unique advantage here. Despite this though, Tapu Lele could definitely still find some pretty strong offensive pressure in this format, and I think at minimum it would find a place in the format, even if it wasn't the most common option. We have two remaining Tapus, and these would definitely be the two that I would say would have the most relevance by a long shot in this generation. Starting off with the Tapu that everyone says would save VGC right now, let's talk about Tapu Koko. Well, Tapu Koko definitely offers a lot of unique qualities in VGC, such as a very viable electric terrain setter that isn't a restricted Pokemon such as Maridon, but it also could honestly have a lot of huge benefits for the future Paradox Pokemon. We've heard all generation how powerful threats such as Iron Hands, Iron Bundle, and all the rest of the future Paradox Pokemon are eagerly awaiting Tapu Koko's arrival in order to finally become viable in this format, due to the fact that they would be relying a lot less on the booster energy item, though I don't know if that's necessarily the case. In earlier regulations, I do think that Coco would have definitely had a pretty big impact on VGC, enabling some strong Iron Spam teams to shine, but I don't really know how much of an impact this would have had. Luckily though, we could at least take a look at Maradon to get some extent as to how powerful Coco might have been in earlier formats. Looking at Maradon teams that are performing well, there's a lot that we can look at as far as the best Paradox Pokemon that are partnering on these teams. And these are, well, 
Rodham actually really isn't utilizing any in the moment. During a format like Regulation F, I can see Tapu Koko maybe having an impact on six out of these 10 Paradox options, which honestly is being extremely generous here. Starting with Iron Leaves and Iron Jugulus, these would definitely be a lot more niche for sure, but they might be able to find a place in some teams. Similar to Maradon, we'd have needed Coco as mostly a pivot that could actually cycle in and out in order to keep the terrain up with a really strong choice specs Volt Switch here. This is because options like Rillaboom and Ndidi would otherwise be significantly slower than Coco, ensuring they can keep up a really strong terrain advantage when it's allowed in format. Neither of these Pokemon had real relevance in Regulation F anyway, but there's some decent synergy with Coco though, through Iron Leaves at least being able to pressure options like Ursa Luna for Coco, while Iron Jugulus could at least weaken incoming special threats like Landorus and Blood Moon Ursa Luna with the move Snarl that is really good at weakening a lot of special offensive threats here, as well as being a really good check to a lot of the grass types that might wall Coco's electric moves, such as Rillaboom and Amoongus, which are pretty noteworthy threats in Regulation F. Well, I do think that Iron Leaves would have eventually died out through Regulation G, even if Tapu Koko was allowed as a non-restricted electric terrain setter, I think at the very least, the combination of Kyogre, Coco, and Iron Jugulus could have been pretty decent here. Coco would be a great way to handle all the water types that might otherwise take advantage of Kyogre's rain here. Meanwhile, Iron Jugulus is still a great way to clear through any sort of grass types like Rillaboom and Amoongus that would at least be able to pressure Kyogre really well. I could see a minimum Coco partnering with options like Iron Bundle, Iron Moth, Iron Hands, and Iron Boulder all of which do a very specific key benefit that they would offer to Coco teams. Starting off with our special options, Iron Moth and Iron Bundle. These two would have very specifically tailored benefits that would make Tapu Koko into a really potent win con. With Iron Moth, you would get a really strong enabler to make Tapu Koko's otherwise mediocre special attack into a very terrifying attack stat. With Acid Spray, you'd be able to drop most opponent's special defense stat by two stages, which is pretty valuable because a lot of the Pokemon that would best wall Coco don't really like to do that when they've had their special defense lowered by two stages. Iron Bundle, meanwhile, could pick off a lot of faster threats, allowing them to underpace Coco now, especially if there are options like Fluttermane without a booster energy, or even Pokemon like Chien Pao, which are pretty terrifying in this format. Meanwhile, if you wanted to go for some more physically oriented threats, Iron Hands and Iron Boulder would be really strong partners with Tapu Koko. With Tapu Koko around, both Pokemon could more easily utilize the item Clear Amulet in order to avoid losing attack while next to Coco, and be better checks to options like Incineroar that would be very effective in this current format. With Iron Hands in particular, you'd probably be using us on more Trick Room focused teams with Tapu Koko as your fast mode here, and with an attack boost due to the Quark Drive, you could honestly do some really serious damage with some stab, clear amulet, protected wild charges that you can't just intimidate around. Meanwhile, with Iron Boulder, you would probably focus this more on Tailwind teams with Tapu Koko, enabling you as a really strong way to break through teams with a good hyper offensive Pokemon that is going to outpace pretty much everything in the format and gets around Protect entirely. While I fully believe that Coco would have plenty to offer to VGC in this generation, I do think it would have to play strictly as a pivot at least. There are definitely some niches that it would offer over Maridon, but I think it would essentially play very similarly where you're using a moveset of Dazzling Gleam, Discharge, Volt Switch, and Thunderbolt, with a Terra Electric moveset and a Choice Specs to lean heavily into your terrain boosted strong stab here. Now you could in theory go with the Terra Fairy moveset as well, which would have some place in the format, and I would highly recommend replacing Discharge on this moveset and instead going with Terra Blast as this actually gives you a very strong single target fairy type move. This is probably the best area that Coco has over Maridon, as with this Terra Fairy route, you actually could get a really good niche into Pokemon like Maridon and Raging Bull. Now I think Tapu Fini would objectively be the most noteworthy Tapu when it comes to VGC this generation. I'm unsure what movesets it would specifically focus on this time around though, but considering in previous formats it's had a lot of options such as Choice Scarf, Calm Mind, or even Sawbreaker sets with Taunt and Nature's Madness, you really can't go wrong with a Pokemon like Tapu Fini. Fini would honestly solve quite a few issues that currently plague the Scarlet and Violet metagame. For starters, Tapu Fini's incredible defensive typing of Water and Fairy gives it a really good check into these sort of rain teams, with a really great way to resist both of her Shifu stab options, and with the rain up, you actually boost your Muddy Water stab even further. Tapu Fini also has the same typing as Azumarill, which was a really good role for it in Regulation C actually, giving it some strong relevance into two of the best Pokemon at the time, being Chiyu and Chien Pao. Tapu Fini would be far better suited into these defensive defensive roles here, and it honestly could even benefit from Chiyu greatly as a partner due to the fact that its Calm Mind and Choice sets would really appreciate the damage boost Chiyu would provide. Also, let's not forget that Tapu Fini would probably honestly just be the best counter to Dundozo by a long shot, with options like Taunt, Nature's Madness, Trick, and Haze that could all very easily combat this very terrifying strategy in previous formats. Fini honestly has a very wide net that it could cast over the current formats, and I honestly could not tell you how many times I have really appreciated the thought of saying, wow, I wish I had Tapu Fini in this format, as it would be a perfect 6th spot on this team. Despite all of this though, I don't really think that Tapu Fini would even be overbearing, but it would definitely be one of, if not the best Pokemon in the format. Now Tapu Fini's greatest strength as opposed to the other terrain setters is honestly the fact that unlike our other options, 
Tapu Fini isn't just good because it has terrain. But we compare it to every other of the Surge Pokemon in this current format, Tapu Fini actually has a really good stat spread to boot, and even if you do get a terrain up against Tapu Fini that isn't its own, it really doesn't mind. While I won't act like Tapu Fini doesn't appreciate the immunity to moves like Toxic and Thunder Wave, this isn't exactly why you use Fini. Rather, instead it's a really good defensive fairy type, and it has such a good stat spread that's very well optimized that it can typically check most viable Pokemon in the format. Finny also would be a really great place on a lot of balance arc types that are currently missing a really good defensive water type that isn't exactly passive here. With partners like Incineroar and Rillaboom that could really honestly give it a great place in the format, this would be a really good way to actually utilize Tapu Finny right now, and it would have a lot of use in my opinion. Speaking of, if you remember all the way back in Regulation E, one of the weirdest Pokemon that won a regional was Como, with its Iron Defense and Body Press moveset. Now, Tapu Finny actually was a really incredible partner all the way back in the Spike Buff Cut format in Sword and Shield, which is a fan dub format that didn't allow Dynamax and just played in vanilla Sword and Shield. And this duo was winning a lot of online tournaments. When you paired these two with Rillaboom, it was a pretty unstoppable combination actually that a lot of teams really did struggle to actually take on. And I think this is the type of team where Finny would really show just how good it is in BGC. There are honestly so many other Pokemon that truly do love the presence of Tapu Finny, but I think the greatest benefit truly is the fact that we would for the first time all generation finally have a viable defensive fairy type. Now, this is a pretty massive deal as this opens up a lot of new team building routes that otherwise teams wouldn't have really had in BGC. Considering right now if you want a good bulky fairy type, you're looking at options like Terra Fairy, Archaludon, it's really a appreciated typing that just does not exist right now. And considering how good a lot of dragon types are, this is a really huge deal. I know I've talked a lot about Regulation F, but I still do think Finny would have a big place in Regulation G as a strong check to Pokemon like Calyrex Ice, Groudon, Tropicos, and especially Coridon in order to benefit your teammates greatly in these types of matchups. I think this guy truly is the limit when it comes to Tapu Finny, and I do think that it would truly redefine BGC this generation. And I think that's not even an overstatement here. So let me know what you guys thought down below of all the Tapus in PGC and just how good they could possibly be. If you want to see more content like this, check out the channel link below where you can hit the subscribe button and stay up to date on all the future content. Also, consider checking out our channel memberships. For just a couple dollars a month, it goes a long way to supporting the channel monetarily and it helps me pay the editors even more who create this wonderful content. For starters, we have Kurt who does all the long-term content on this channel, including the video you just watched today. And he also has a YouTube channel of his own that he'll be uploading to soon again, which you to check out on the top right here. Also, we have our short form editor, Becca, who is probably the reason you guys found the channel as of recently, especially over the past month. She handles all of our short form content and does a great job on it. And while I can't put her Twitch in the top right, it's going to be down below as well if you guys to click on, and I highly recommend you guys checking her out. With that said, I will see you guys next week for another video. Until then, peace out guys.